Hi everyone, this is Mandy, and what you're seeing here is a really fun bloom that I created and thought that I recorded and it didn't record. So up next I'm going to try to somewhat duplicate it, so stay tuned, but I wanted you to see the result of this one. Um, I'm going to use the same colors for the one up next. The only thing I'm going to do is add one minor um, tweak to the cell activator. I'm going to do a dual cell activator instead of just one. But stay tuned. Really beautiful colors. And uh, the color palette was inspired by Tomoko. And uh, I'll link her channel or her video that inspired this pour below. But this is a close-up of what I thought I recorded for you. <laughs> So we're still going to use an 8-inch round. This is an 8-inch round, and we're going to use an 8-inch canvas. Stay tuned. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. This is Mandy, and as you probably saw in the beginning, I had a, an unfortunate incident where I thought I recorded this really pretty bloom, I thought, that was inspired by some colors Tomoko used, and I'll link her video below. She always has amazing color combinations. Anyway, apparently I <laughs> I paused the video to put paint on the canvas like I'm doing right now. And I guess I thought I paused it and I was recording. And so when I went to go hit the record button, I actually turned it off. So either that or it betrayed me somehow. I'm not really sure, but we're going to try to do the same colors. The only thing that we're going to do differently, just be not that they're ever going to turn out the exact same because that like never happens, but the only thing we're going to do a little bit differently is instead of using only a blue-black cell activator, I'm going to use a blue-black and a copper. Um, I have a lot of both of those mixed up and they're, the copper is a little older, so I'm kind of concerned about how it's going to perform. Sometimes when you use a double cell activator, the one you put on the bottom sort of disappears and the one you put on the top kind of takes over. So I'm still on the fence about what I'm going to do, um, blue-black on the bottom or um, copper on the bottom. I'm kind of leaning toward blue-black on the top because it's the freshest and if I have any trouble blowing things out it might be with that one. But then it might look just the same so I might just take my chances. Anyway, this is an 8 inch canvas. Sorry, I'm taking a sip of coffee. and so. Um, pretty much all the colors we're using today, with the exception of um, one Amsterdam color and an interference violet, are from the Wildflower set from Color Art. Um, and I have a mixing video in my description box below about how I mix my pigments. The, most of these were mixed up fresh, with the exception of Autumn Leaf and Pomegranate, because I had them mixed up already. So the ones I mixed up fresh, I mixed with the Vivid Polypore, which came with the set. Um, I get questions about this a lot, so I just wanted to share it with you guys. The polypore is, um, it's a ready to use kind of bloom base. So it has, it's a pouring medium and it doesn't have to be used for blooms, but it has varnish in it like we would use for blooms. So if you want to use it for your blooms, you can. I did add a little bit of um, regular gel gloss from Golden. And what I did is I added it in here first and let it mix up really well and then I mixed it with my pigments. From there, if it's too thick, you can thin it down with a little bit of Joe Sonia and water um, or polyacrylic. For the Joe Sonia and water, I do a ratio of three parts Joe Sonia to one part water, which I learned from Shelly. Um, if you're thinning down with polyacrylic, you don't necessarily need to thin it down with water first because polyacrylic is naturally kind of thin. Um, but I like to use Joe Sonia and water if I have that option, but you can do either. So I don't do a separate mix for my paints and my pigments most of the time. I just mix them all the same, and if one is too thin, I can add the golden gel gloss, and if one's too thick, I can thin it down with the Joe Sonia and water. So that's just a quick tip for you guys. So thank you, Tomoko, for the color inspiration. Of course, I'm going to tag her channel. Um, been having trouble tagging in the actual title, so I'll tag in the description box and list the video where she um, used this beautiful combo. She did another bloom in the same video that I want to try as well. I think I have most of the colors mixed up. 
So this is Interference Violet. And the next color we're gonna use is Royal Satin. Beautiful, beautiful color. I love Tomoko's use of color. She also has incredible use of negative space, even on a small surface. So if you don't yet follow Tomoko, I can't imagine that you wouldn't, but if you don't, you should. She makes some of the most incredible blooms and she's such a sweetheart. So if you don't follow her, please do. And then we're gonna use Sea Spray. I love this blue a lot. So, um, I have an idea of using this blue with some peach colors and um, kind of a turquoise green. We'll see if that materializes. I, I don't know about you guys, but I write down all these random things that pop in my head, and then I try to figure out how to make sure that I at some point capture them <laughs> in something. So this is pomegranate. This is one of the ones that was already mixed with my regular pouring medium and I mixed it a long time ago. So who knows if that was bare or infinity or a combination, <laughs> who knows, but it's beautiful. And um, I do sometimes also get questions about how long you can use your pigments and stuff that are mixed up. As long as they will mix, you can get them to work. If they're too thick, thin them down. The only time I haven't been able to get them to work is if they're completely sludgy and they're just, they've turned into like a gummy mess. And that's the that's true of any paint. But don't throw them out. Some people only use paint they mix up right then. Some people only use paint that they mix up within a couple of days. I mean, to each their own, but I'm not going to waste my beautiful pigments if I can get them to work and I've had very successful blooms with them being mixed up um, for a long time. That was Love You Pink, by the way. Really cool color. This is Autumn Leaf, which is probably one of the most beautiful browns I've ever seen. All right, and then our two paint color is gonna be Amsterdam turquoise green, which I super love using in blooms now. I also really like using this color as a cell activator. So, Chloe, stop that. Hey, stop it. Never fails. I start recording. The dogs lick their toes. They, they burp. They make weird noises. They bark. Somebody comes to the door. Just never fails. Okay. Just need to find a skewer real quick to pop some bubbles. And there were skewers here yesterday. Okay. So yesterday, I've been, you know, I've, if you follow my channel, you know I'm always practicing with one of these random blowers or tools I have to blow blooms out with. Because part of the struggle with going bigger is feeling pretty comfortable in how you're gonna blow out a bigger bloom so you have um, kind of not equitable because that sounds too um, too maybe OCD-ish, but um, so you have cells and lacing kind of throughout your piece and not because what I struggle with is I'll get them all in one section and like over here will be like where did it go and so that really messes with me a little bit. So um, yeah, so. I am practicing with a mini blow dryer I got a long time ago for blooms. And I was still really kind of new at them then. And I mean, I tried to make it work. I put a cup on the end to narrow the little opening and it felt like it was just not working. I really think it was just that I wasn't, I wasn't doing it right. So it has this cute little tiny opening which is kind of nice for blooms. And the airflow, even on high, is powerful, but it's not like And it has a cool setting, it's super dirty, so don't judge it, and it has dog hair on it, so, because it's sticky from resin or something. But it's a little Berta or something like that. I need to clean the epoxy off of it. I don't know how I got epoxy on it, but 
that's the the life of the artist world huh so we're going to try the blue black cell activator first and i really hope the copper on the top works out this is atelier interactive well they both are actually uh, this is blue back blue black or indigo it's kind of a prussian blue color and it's probably one of my new favorite cell activators um, I love it very much. I used it in um, the swipe I did on Sunday and a swipe I did for a clock face last week. So if you if you watch the channel, you've probably seen it a couple times making a debut. And this is Copper from Atelier. This is also interactive. I will say their metallics work really, really great, except they're very thick. Well, really, all of their interactive paints are kind of thick. So you kind of have to gauge the amount of water that, or not water, sorry, sorry, brain, brain fart. You have to kind of gauge the amount of Floetrol by maybe starting with three to one and then add it a little bit until you get what you need. Sorry, I had to take a sip of coffee. Okay. All I'm doing is opening up the middle a little bit. Now, I'm no expert at the blow dryer thing, but what I have learned is to start high and catch it and then move it. So, That I didn't blow out all that well but the rest I'm gonna get with a straw or with a, a turkey baster because if I keep reworking that same area I'm gonna lose the action that I have that's good let me make sure you can kind of see what's happening so far I like it um, you can see it but maybe not the greatest I'm afraid to zoom in too much because my autofocus will go crazy so really cool cells are performing so the fun part about using a double cell activator especially if it's a white or a black with another color is usually the white or the black will form these really cool cells and help you create those peacock cells where you have the multi color cells in the middle so in Tomoko's video she did let me see I wrote it down she did a black cell activator and then she created a cell activator using um, a true silver from Color Art. So she, she used a pigment recipe to create a cell activator, which she's done a couple times and had great success. I haven't mixed one up yet, but I wanted to use what I had mixed up, so I modified what she did a little bit. Um, but because she used a metallic color, it kind of did something similar to this. So um, the other thing about copper cell activator is copper cells kind of continue to form. So the cell activator responds really well, even after a couple seconds. So don't go too crazy trying to break up that stuff in the middle. <laughs> Excuse me. If you do break it up, remember, you only want to break this surface tension. You're not trying to blow a cell open. You're just trying to break up enough surface tension in the paint so it'll kind of do it on its own because it's doing it on its own everywhere very well. So we're going to very gently just... Just blow where there's a lot of copper. I'm not gonna worry about these parts because that's gonna continue to form as we spin. And you can overdo this here and get really mutated looking cells, so take it easy on that. If I trusted my embellishing skills more than I do, <clears throat> I would do that there. Okay, the one thing I wanna do is try to take some of this and glide it over but I'm gonna do it very carefully. Um, Puffy might be a better candidate for that than uh, the problem with this um, turkey baster is 
like where I want to grab, I want to grab a little section and it's grabbing like a little small straw size on not what I'm looking for. So let's try this Puffy 2000 and see if I can get what I want. I'm just playing around anyway. Okay. Mm, too close. Hold on, Puffy. This is not blowing through here. Hold on. I have something attached wrong. I think my paint might be a little thick for Puffy. That's okay. Good. Yeah, better. Okay. See how I got a better line there? My paint's a little thick, so I better spin and stop playing around too much. Okay. That's my dog again. See how those cells continue to form? Now I have like a volcano in the middle of that. Little puppy. Okay. This is kind of weird looking. I let it sit for too long, but I think it'll be okay. I'm not spinning very hard because I don't have my puppy pool in here and I'm trying not to get it all over the floor. I am glad I did the copper though because now this one is more unique instead of me doing another bloom that's exactly the same. So I'm just bummed that you guys didn't get to see the other one. And the copper lacing on all of this purple and pink and the autumn leaf and stuff in the background, it's really beautiful. I love how this uh, turquoise green color always creates the coolest color as it mixes with the other colors. Like this created a beautiful green. I've had it just blend so well with so many blooms I've used it in. I just love it a lot. And okay, so now I'm trying to get my edges. I want to make sure I don't have too much paint on here. <laughs> this cell in the middle is real crazy looking and everything in me wants to mess with it because it's so, you know, crater like. But I know in my knower that if I mess with that, it will destroy it because I've done it so many times. So I'm just not gonna. So I'm just gonna spin it enough to make sure that it's enough paint is off. And I'm trying to <laughs> use my arm as a guide because I have a lot of paint on my on my turner. Oh goodness. I love a black pillow. It always looks so dramatic. And I love, I mean, the colors are always going to look darker on there, of course. It's going to dry darker. And sometimes you don't see some of the contrast until you resin it or until you get up close. But man, once you resin it, it's so elegant looking and so beautiful. And there's so much interest in it. It's just really, really, really fun. So... I think we might be good. Let me see if I can bring you guys down for a close-up. One more baby spin. I don't want to spin too much because that, that crater is getting bigger. Okay, let me clean up my hands and I'll bring you down for a close-up. Um, while I'm cleaning up, don't forget all of the discounts for you in the description box below. Um, of course, color art, 20% off using Mandy1120. This beautiful wildflower set, you can't buy it as a set, but those colors you can buy individually. So the, um, the ability to buy it as a set just expired, but the colors you can buy individually and they're gorgeous. And um, of course there's so many new things out. The glass wing set is beautiful, um, prison pour. So don't forget to use those coupons and save yourself some money. Um, there's also the 15% uh, off for pixel paint designs. You can get your boom gels, your Australian flow troll, and all that fun stuff. Um, so yeah, take advantage of that. We would love for you to join our Facebook group, Fluid Art Friends, and share your, your uh, creations with us. We'd love to see what you make. So that's all below. And um, this will eventually 
probably be for sale somewhere once I resin it and stuff. So I do try to show you guys the resin results, um, like maybe later on in a short or something. Um, so make sure you're subscribed if you're not. I so appreciate everyone's support. Let me know what you think of this bloom um, in the comments below. So let me bring you down and show you a close-up, and um, I'll be right back. All right, everybody, so here it is at a glance, and I'm super happy that I used the copper. Um, it plays so well with these colors. Now, sorry, my dog's making noise again. I guess she wants me to shut up. Um, you can see, sorry about the paint on my nose, you can see in the middle what I mean about how one cell activator becomes more dominant and the other one just kind of becomes an outline. That's what happened with the copper, but it was the perfect balance for this because it added that pop of color to separate some of these cells. So you can see the interest a little bit better. Um, and then up close, right here, you can see that beautiful copper lacing. That's one thing you won't always get a visual of with a solid color, but with a metallic, you get the most beautiful lacing it kind of spreads over your piece like a sheer curtain so it shows all the color because it has that kind of transparent shimmer and it enhances the color but it doesn't hide the color if you use too much of an opaque or a solid color cell activator you're gonna mask your colors if you don't blow it out well but with with the metallic that has a good stretchy ability I don't really know what the right word is elasticity um, which the Atelier paints do, um, you can get a really great lacing effect around your edges. And then, of course, obviously you get the effect of the beautiful cells. So here we have some lacing where you can see that the copper is a little bit more dominant than the blue-black. In the middle, you kind of have a little bit of both. So I really like the way this turned out. And this, like, this crater cell in the middle is, is growing on me, so I'm really glad I didn't mess with it. But gotta love it this is all pigments except for that turquoise green everything else is pigments and they're primary elements so they're semi-transparent so it's a lot of fun to play around with them um, super 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 beautiful keep in mind that on a black pillow like this you can kind of get away with that because they're really gonna pop on that black pillow but look at that so Tomoko, you are a genius with your colors, and thank you for the inspiration. And act surprised when I use a different color palette that you have also recently done. Anyway, I love you guys. I appreciate you so very much. Don't forget to check out her video and her channel. And thank you so much for watching. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Talk to you soon.